Let's go ahead and begin the next unit, which is going to cover fractions, and begin the lesson on finding the GCF and the LCM using various strategies. Let's go ahead and open up our composition notebook. Find the next available page. So let's begin by looking at some vocabulary terms. Go ahead and write the title across the top, include your page number and today's date. So let's begin by looking at a prime number. Now a prime number is a counting number that can only be divided by one and itself. A counting number that can only be divided by one and itself. So the set of prime numbers starts with two, three, five, seven, eleven, 13, 17, 19, and so on. Now don't confuse prime numbers with odd numbers or even numbers. It is a number that can only be divided by one and itself. For example, seven. If you look at all the numbers that divide into seven, you will only find one times seven. So, so seven is a prime number. Okay, composite number. A composite number is the opposite of a prime number. It is a number which does have factors other than one and itself. So let's look at the definition of a composite number. It is a number that does have factors. other than one and itself. Okay, so remember a number cannot be prime and composite at the same time. So if two is a prime number, three is a prime number, then that leaves four. Over here I have five, so this would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11 is prime, 12, there's the 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is prime, 18, 19, and then 20. There we go. So I am looking at the list of counting numbers from 1 through 20 and identifying the prime numbers from the composite numbers. Now let's look at an example of, let's say, 8. Now 8 can be written as a product of 1 times itself, 1 times 8. However, it can also factor 2 times 4. And so therefore, 8 is a composite number because it does factor, it does have other factors besides just 1 and itself. Okay. So let's look at the term factor. A factor are all the whole numbers that can be divided exactly into another number. All the whole numbers that can be divided exactly or evenly with no remain remainders into another number.
Okay, so let's find the factors. Let's find the factors of 30. Okay, so if I need to find the factors of 30, I'm going to break up the 30 into 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10. Now 4 does not divide into 30, but notice how I'm going in a very organized list. five times six, and when I want to go to six, I see I already have six. So how do you know when to stop? You start with one, two, three, and you keep going until the number repeats on the way back up, kind of like a U. Okay, so the factors of 30 in order are one, two, three, five, six, ten, fifteen, and 30. Now you know that as elementary teachers we love to apply nicknames and cute little titles to this so I saw this online as the rainbow. The rainbow could go above or below. I'm going to do it below since I have room. I can multiply 1 times 30 that's one pair. 2 times 15 gives me the other pair. 3 times 10 and 5 times 6. And I like doing the rainbow because it reminds me or it helps me check that I have pairs. And I have seen the students where they'll say, is this the rainbow method? Okay, so let's look at prime factors. So a prime factor is when you break up a number in only the product of pri with prime numbers. Okay. Now remember our prime numbers start with 2. So when I divide a number, let's say uh, find the prime factors of 30. Let's do 36. Find the prime factors of 36. So I'm going to create a factor tree. Let's write that term down. A factor tree. It's just a visual aid that will help me to divide it up. F -R T R. Oh, there we go. Factor tree. <laughs> okay. Now remember my prime numbers start with 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to divide 36 divided by 2 and I got 18. Now 2 is a prime number. So I'm going to divide it again by 2. 2 is a prime number. Now when I look at the 9, I cannot divide by 2. So I move on to the next prime number, which is 3. Once I have all my primes, then I'm done. Now, when you do the prime factors of 36, we, we as teachers try to be organized and we start with a simple pattern. My pattern, I tell my students, is always start with two or three. Now, if I were to break that pattern, and let's say nine times four is 36, that would still work. Our tree would look different, but our final answer would be the same. So the factors of 9 are 3 times 3. Those are prime. And the factors of 4 are 2 times 2. So either way, I end up with the same number. So the prime factors of 36 are 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Notice that you don't have to put them in order, but it sure is a lot nicer when you put them in order from smallest to largest. Now I do notice that the 2 repeats, so this could be 2 to the second power because it repeats twice, 
and the 3 repeats to the second power or twice also. Either way, with exponents or without exponents. An easy way to remember these two is prime numbers start with 2, so prime factors I start to divide by 2. When I think of factors, I always start with 1. Factors start with 1, prime factors start with 2. Okay, let's look at the next term, which is multiple. I have room down here. So a multiple is something that you multiply. 2, 4, 6, 8. So a multiple is the product of a number and a counting number. The product of a number and a counting number. For example, when we're counting by threes. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the number by a counting number, one. So, 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9, and so on. So a multiple is when you multiply a number by the counting numbers. 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, and so on. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice one more time. Let's go ahead and list the factors of 50. So find the factors of 50. Please feel free to pause the video if you need a little bit of time to work on this. We are looking for the factors of 50. Now remember that any time I see the term factor, I start with 1. So I'm going to break up the 50 into 1 times, 2 times. 3 does not go into 50, so I don't even have to write it down. 4, no, 5. And I think that's it. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Notice it does repeat. My factors of 50 are 1, 2, 5, 10, 25, and 50. Let's check to see if we have an even number of pairs. 1 times 50 is 50, 2 times 25 is 50, and 5 times 10 is 50. Okay, let's try another one. Let's find the prime factors of 50. Now notice sometimes they will say prime factors or the prime factorization. Again, we're going to do a factor tree that starts with 2. Anytime I see the word prime, I'm going to start with 2. So 2 times 25, 2 is a prime number. 25 can still be broken up into 5 times 5. Now I have seen in some videos online where instead of leaving the 2 dangling up there, notice how over here we left the 2 up here and up there. I have seen where they will bring down that factor again. This way they're all in one line. It's the same method, just being a little bit more exact here. So the prime factors of 50 are 2 times 5 times 5 or 2 times 5 to the second power. Now, we've how do we use or why do we need to know the prime? Okay, We are going to use 
this information to find the greatest common factor. So let's write some notes down here. I still have a little bit of space. These are two strategies or two methods in finding the greatest common factor. And we abbreviate the greatest common factor as GCF. So one of the methods we use is the list of factors. And the second method we use is through prime factorization. Also known as prime factorization. Okay, let's go ahead and highlight this so it'll stand out in our notebook. You can highlight just the title or the whole little area here. Okay. I'm going to save this space for some other notes, but I'm going to continue on the next page. Let's go ahead and continue by finding the GCF of 36 and 48 by listing the factors. I'm using the next available page. Go ahead and put the page number and the date across the top. Find the GCF of 36 and 48 by listing the factors. Anytime I see the term factors, I remember to start by one. So here's my 36, my 48. Let's start with one. One times 36 is 36. Two times 18. 3 times 12, 4 times 9, not 5, but 6 times 6. And notice here it starts to repeat. 48 divided by 1, 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12 is 48, not 5, 6 times 8 is 48, not 7, and I notice the 8 is already there. So let's make a list in order. 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. 48, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48. In order to find the greatest common factor, we're going to circle the greatest factor, the highest, the greatest common factor. Now I do notice they both share a one they both have a 2 in common, they both have a 3 in common, a 4, a 6, a 12. But remember, we're looking for the greatest common factor, which in this case is 12. So the GCF of 36 and 48 is 12. <clears throat> now remember we use the GCF whenever we're going to reduce or simplify fractions. So if I were to be asked, if I were asked to simplify 36 over 48, I would divide by 12. 12 divides into 36 three times. 12 divides into 48 four times. This 12 right here is my GCF. Let's go ahead and find the GCF of 36 and 48 using prime factorization. 
find the GCF of 36 and 48 using prime factors. Now notice you may say prime factors or they may say prime factorization. Same thing. Whenever we see the word prime, we remember to create a factor tree and we start dividing by 2. So 36 divides by 2. 2 is a prime number, so I circle it. 18 can divide by 2 again, 2 times 9. We circle the 2, and that leaves me 3 times 3, which are also prime. So the prime factors of 36 are 2, 2, 3, 3. Let's go ahead and continue with a 48. Divide by 2, 2 times 24. Divide by 2, 2 times 12. Divide by 2, 2 times 6. Divide by 2, 2 times 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out the list. The prime factors of 36 are 2, 2, 3, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Yeah, let's go ahead and put a multiplication symbol in between. 48 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Let's go ahead and check it and make sure I got them all. You can multiply either right to left or left to right. 3 times 3 is 9 times 2 is 18 times 2 is 36, so that's correct. 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, and 24 times 2 is 48. Okay, so we're looking for the GCF, and what we're going to do first is circle all the common factors. Circle all common prime factors. So I notice they both have a 2, 2, and a 3. So the common factors that I circled are 2, 2, and 3. The next thing you're going to do is multiply those factors. So the GCF of 36 and 48 is 2 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. So we get the same answer whether we use the factor by listing the factors So notice that we get the same answer whether we make, list the factors. Remember factors start with 1. We circle the greatest common factor. In the prime factorization method, we do a factor tree for the 36, a factor tree for the 48. We circle all the common prime factors and we multiply those prime factors, 2 times 2 times 3. That product is 12. So the GCF of 36 and 48 is 12, whether we use prime factorization or the list of factors. So which method did you find easier? Okay, let's continue and look for the least common multiple, the LCM. Now remember earlier I had a little bit of space in the previous page, so I'm going to go back over there and write down the two methods for finding the LCM. Finding the lowest common multiple, LCM. Okay, we're going to create a list of multiples. And the list of prime factors. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and highlight this to make sure it stands out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example. Let's find the LCM of 18 and 10 using the list of multiples. Find the LCM of 18 and 10 using the list of multiples. Okay, so we remember earlier that a multiple is when you multiply a certain number by a counting number and we continue multiplying and multiplying. So in this case, I like to think of the M in LCM as multiplying until they match. So the number we're going to multiply is 18 and 10. So I'm going to multiply a few of the 18s and then I'll go down to the 10s and I'll go back and forth 18 and 10 until I find a multiple that matches with both. So 18 times 1 is 18. 18 times 2 is 36. 10, 20, 30, 40. 18 times 3 is 54. 40, 50, 60. And then 18 times 4. Now we know it's got to end in a 0, so it's going to be 18 times 5. Well, right here, 8 times 4 is 32, which is 72. 18 times 5 is 90. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3. 18 times 4 is 72. 18 times 5 is 90. 60, 70, 80, 90. And there we go. So the LCM of 18 and 10 is 90. So it, in order to find the LCM using the list of multiples, we multiply each of the two numbers, 18, 9, 10, 18 and 10, we multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply until they match. So the LT LCM of 18 and 10 is 90. Now you may be wondering, what do we use the LCM for? So if I were to add fractions, let's say I'm adding 1 over 18 plus 1 over 10. Remember, we need to find a common denominator. That common denominator when I'm adding or subtracting fractions is my LCM. So the LCM is used to find the common denominator of fractions. Common denominator when adding and subtracting fractions. Let's go ahead and find a different method to find the LCM using prime factors. Find the LCM of 18 and 10 using prime factors. Prime factors or prime factorization. Anytime I see the word prime, I think of 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, so we need a factor tree. 18 and 10. Prime numbers start with 2. 2 times 9 is 18. I look at the 9 and I divide by 3. 
So the prime factors of 18 are 2 times 3 times 3. Now let's do a factor tree for 10. Prime numbers start with 2. So that's 2 times 5. Now 2 and 5 are both prime numbers, so we are done. Okay. In order to find the LCM using prime factorization, what we're going to do is we are going to circle the common prime factors in both. So I notice that they both share a 2, and that's it. Okay. Now we're going to multiply all the factors, including the one that we circled. So the two that we circled, I write it down one time. I circled two twos, but I only write it down one time, times all of the other factors, three, three, five. So my LCM is going to come from two times three, times three, times five. Let's check that. 2 times 3 is 6, times 3 is 18, 18 times 5 is 90. So the LCM of 18 and 10 is 90. Okay, so let's look at this again. In order to find the LCM using prime factors, we circle all the common factors. Well, we did that earlier in GCF. Yes, but in the GCF, we only multiply the factors that we circle. Maybe we should write that down. Only multiply the factors that we circled. Here, I only multiply two, two, three. In the LCM, we're gonna multiply all the factors, the number that's duplicated, that's duplicate in the top and on the bottom that we circled, we only multiply once. So how could we circle that here? I'm going to highlight these two. That's this one. These two become one. I write down the duplicate two one time times all of the other factors. 335, 335, which gives me 90. Okay, so which one of these two methods did you like? We looked at list of multiples and the LCM finding using prime factors. Multiply duplicates only once. Okay, now another way of showing the relationship between the factors is by using a Venn diagram. So let's go ahead and look at that method. Okay, find the GCF of 18 and 10 using the intersection of two sets method. Using the intersection of two sets, which is a Venn diagram. Now, since I'm only looking at the relationship between two sets, I'm going to draw two circles enclosed in a rectangle. If I were finding the LCM or GCF of three numbers, I would draw three circles. So let's agree, and I'm going to put the 18 on the left and the 10 on the right. It doesn't matter, but let's just put the 18 on the left and the 10 on the right. Now, I'm going to list the prime factors. Now, we just did those a few minutes ago. So we said that the prime factors of 18, I'm going to try a different factors. Let's try 3 times 6, 2 times 3. 
I end up with the same final answer. I may have to put these in order. That's okay. And now 10 can only be written one way, right? I guess we can do it backwards, five times two. Okay. Anything that's common to both will go in the intersecting region in the center where the two circles intersect. Now let's look at the 18. I'm going to very lightly, let's look at the circle that contains the 18. I'm going to very lightly shade that so you could see this whole circle is the 18. So I, I need to include the other two factors, but not in the center, anywhere in the up region where the 18 is. So this whole circle is 2 times 3 times 3. Okay. Now let's look at the other circle, which represents the factors of 10. Now I already have the 2 in the center, so I just need to put the 5 anywhere in this circle, representing the 10. Now in the center, I will have the overlapping section. So whenever, it's hard to see there in the video, but this is darker. Does that help? There we go. That's the darker center part is the intersection. So whenever I'm looking at GCF, let's go ahead and do a quick sketch here. Maybe it's easier to see. The numbers in that center part represent the GCF. The GCF is the factor located in the intersection of the two circles, in this case, 2. Now we could also find LCM using this method. So let's go ahead and write that down here on the bottom underneath. Find the LCM of 18 and 10 using the intersection of the two sets. Known as a Venn diagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat it just so it'll be on my notes. I'll just draw a small Venn diagram with two overlapping circles. We already did the prime factors. I'm gonna put 18 and 10 on, just like I did earlier. Let's go ahead and list our factors. Only this time I am looking for LCM. Now the LCM is the factors in both circles. All of the factors listed in both circles. So my LCM is going to be, let's put them in some kind of order here, two, three, three, five. Two times three is six, times three is 18. 18 times five is 90. So here, the LCM is represented by all the factors in both circles. While the GCF is represented only by the factors that are inside the intersecting or the overlapping circles. So in the same diagram, I can look at the center part and find the GCF, or I could look at both circles multiply all of the numbers, and that would give me my LCM. So what is the purpose of using a Venn diagram? What this does, it helps eliminate duplicates. Remember that any number that's common 
to the 18 and the 10 is put in the center section. And so we, we already eliminate any duplicates. Okay, let's go ahead and title this right above this. So this is the intersection of two met sets method. Include your date and page number, please. So I'm going to draw my two intersecting circles. I don't know their value yet. I have a two in the center region. In the center region, I have three, two, two, and on the right, I have a three. Okay. If I'm looking for GCF, I'm only multiplying the region that's in the center. So the GCF is going to be 3 times 2 times 2. 3 times 2 times 2, which is 3 times 2 is 6 times 2 is 12. If I'm looking for the LCM, I'm going to multiply all of the factors listed. Starting on the left, 2, I'll kind of go in order here, 2, two, three, three. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So let's see. Two times two is four, times two is eight. Eight times three is 24. 24 times three is 72. 72, gotta trust it. Okay. I'm curious, I wonder what numbers they were. So let's go back and look at our circles. If I am looking at the circle on the left and I multiply all of the numbers, circles on the left, that would give me, let's see here, two, two times three is six, times two is 12, times two is 24. I'm only multiplying the factors on the left circle. Three times two times two times two. If I were to multiply the factors in the circle on the right, I would multiply 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, times 2 is 36. Now they're not asking me for this and that question, I'm just throwing that in as a bonus. We were able to determine that this circle represents 24 by multiplying all the factors we were able to find the number represented in this circle on the right by multiplying all the factors. If I'm looking for GCF, I only multiply the three numbers in the overlapping center portion, center region. If I'm looking for LCM, I multiply all of the factors in the two circles. Okay, so this is using a Venn diagram to find the GCF and the LCM. Let's look at another method which is new, and is, or new to me anyway, and this is called the ladder method. So let's look at this example here. Go to the top of the next page, and we're going to find the GCF and LCM, and the two numbers represented there are 24 and 36. Using the ladder method. Okay. Find the GCF and LCM of 24 and 36 using the ladder method. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the 24 and the 36 next to each other. You can leave a little space. And we're going to draw an L. L for ladder. Now I'm going to 
divide by a prime number or any number. I'm looking for any number that divides into both of these terms, the 24 and the 36. I could start with 2 because they're both even numbers. I started with 2. 2 divides into 24, and I put the answer underneath. And 2 goes into 36 18 times. I'm going to continue dividing by 2. 2 divides into 12 6 times. 2 divides into 18 9 times. I'm going to continue dividing. Only 6 divides by 2, but 3 doesn't. But 9 doesn't. 6 divides by 2, but 9 doesn't. So I'm going to switch over to 3. Because 3 goes into 6 2 times. And 3 goes into 9. 3 goes into 9 3 times. Now notice that I'm done because 2 and 3 are both prime numbers. Okay, so if I look at the numbers outside here on the left, that will give me my GCF. So the GCF of 24 and 36 is 2 times 2 times 3, which is 6, 12. So the GCF is found by multiplying these numbers right here. I guess we could shade them lightly. These numbers right here. Okay. Now let's say I'm also looking for the LCM. This method also provides the LCM. So the LCM of 24 and 36 is found by creating an L. I'm going to circle all of the factors. Kind of looks like a giant L. And I'm going to multiply 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. I am going to multiply all of these factors. So 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. Isn't this interesting? I wonder who invented this method. It's kind of kind of weird, but it works. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 3 is 72. Hey, those were the same numbers we used a minute ago. In this method, we did 24 and 36 using a Venn diagram. Let's write that word down. I don't know if we wrote it down. In a Venn diagram, it, it also gave us both the GCF and the LCM. The latter method also gives us the GCF and LCM. The first three numbers, if you want to darken those a little bit more so they stand out, the numbers on the left or the factors on the left are my GCF. However, if I continue multiplying the L, all of these will give me the LCM. Now, notice how I did my ladder and I started with 2. I could have done picked other factors. The better I know my times tables, I could go a lot faster. I could have started with 6. It does not have to be a prime number. So 6 goes into 24, 6 times 4 is 24, 6 times 6 is 36, and then I could have divided by 2. 2 goes into 4 2 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times. Once there, if you cannot divide any more, or you can only divide by 1, right, then you're done. See, it gives me the same answer. In this case, 6 times 2, multiply those 2. 6 times 2 gives me 12, just like I got here. It was faster. And then if I multiplied my L, draw your L out, then you get 6 times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24, and 24 times 3 is 72. So different people will have different. If the students are stuck and they don't know what to divide by, we always start with 2, right? Try 2 and then try 3. That's an easy process to remember. Otherwise, you can fact divide by any factor. Okay, so this is called the ladder method. Let's write that down. 
the ladder method. Make sure you put your date and page number across the top. Okay, so let's look at a word problem. Now you may have to pause the video if you want to in order to take your time to copy this problem down. We have pencils come in a package of 18. Erasers that fit on top of these pencils come in a package of 24. I'm going to abbreviate and just say erasers come in a package 24. What is the smallest number of pencils and erasers that you can buy so that each pencil can be matched with an eraser? So what is the smallest number of pencils? Ah, uh, pencils. Start over. There we go. Always excuse my spelling. I get carried away. And erasers that you can buy. So that the numbers match, right? We want an equal number. Or you want to you want to have enough erasers for your pencils. So each pencil can be matched with an eraser. Okay, and then the second thing they want to know is how many packages of each type will you need? Okay, so let's look at this. If I were to buy one package, just one, I will have 18, let's label this. What is 18 is pencils and 24 are the erasers. So if I buy one package of each, I have 18 pencils and 24 erasers, but I want to continue buying them until they match. So I'm going to buy another package and another one. So I now have 36 pencils and 48. So 18 times 3 is 54. And 18 times 4 is 72. Is that right? Now let's count by 24s, and I'm going to keep going until they match. So 24 times 1 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. Times 3 is 72. There we go. So what is the small, smallest number of pencils and erasers that you can buy so that each pencil can be matched with an eraser? So I'm going to need 72 pencils and 72 erasers. What is the smallest number? We want them to match. So I get I bought one package, two packages, three packages, four packages of pencils. And then I bought one, two, three packages of erasers. I guess I could put a G there, packages. 
of erasers. How many packages of each type will you need? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay. So what, op what process did I use to solve this problem? Let's step back a little bit. The other way. Now we knew the answer had to be larger. We were buying more and more and more pencils and erasers, so this is an LCM. We had to find the LCM in order to find the total number of pencils and erasers that would match the same number of both. Then I counted how many 18s and how many 24s, how many packages. One, two, three, four, four packages of pencils, and one, two, three, three packages of erasers. So this is an example of using LCM. Let's look at another example. Mr. Jones' class has 24 students. Mrs. Garza's class has 30 students. Each class is divided into several teams. What is the greatest number of people on a team if both classes have teams that are equal in size? What is the greatest number of people on a team if both classes have teams that are equal in size. Okay, let's go ahead and find the GCF of 24 and 30. 2 times 12, 2 times 6, 2 times 3, 2 times 15, 3 times 5. So 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and 30 is equal to 2 times 3 times 5. Let's double check. Three times two is six, times two is 12, 12 times two is 24, five times three is 15, 15 times two is 30. Let's circle any common factors, which is six. Okay, so let's understand what's happening here. So here's Mrs. Mr. Jones. He's got 24 students. And Mrs. Garza has 30 students. All right, one, two, three, four, five. What is the greatest number of people on a team? Now, all of these teams are the same size. Here, Mr. Jones has four teams. Mrs. Garza has five teams of six. There's six in every team. How, what is the greatest number of people on a team? So there are six people or students in each team. Now, it's not asking me this, but it could have asked me how many teams are in Mr. Jones' class. 
He has four teams. How many teams are in Mrs. Garza's class? She has five teams. Okay, so we're done with this section. We ended up with two word problems. In the next video, I will repeat an overview of the different methods that we just did using GCF and LCM. Go ahead and watch that video and write down some more notes or just watch it and kind of double check. It's a quicker summary and I put a side-by-side -side comparison of the GCF and LCM. So what are the methods we used? Let's see again. We did, let's go to the front. Maybe we need to go back to this page. We did GCF using factors, prime factors, LCM using multiples, and prime factors. We also looked at some more non-traditional or newer methods. These are the traditional methods. We also did the Venn diagram. Right, and then we did the, um, the ladder method. And this is for both GCF and LCM. Okay. I'll see you in the next video.